Welcome to another episode of Out of the Pods. I'm DT. And I'm Natalie. And I am so excited for this episode. We just finished such a great interview with Nancy Rodriguez from Love is Blind season three. And I've actually been like waiting to talk to her because I feel like I don't know. I didn't really understand her storyline, like why she said I do to Bartise at the altar. I was like, how could you say yes to this guy, considering like some comments he made about you and comments he made to Raven during the show? But I feel like she filled in a lot of gaps, like everything makes sense now. Yeah. And she went into like talking about her relationship now and her living in New York. I think you guys are going to really enjoy this interview. Uh, and she's like such a breath of fresh air. And just, yes, we vibed a lot when I met her just because I feel like there's a lot of similarities. She's very uplifting and like very positive. You know, I love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, DG, are you calling yourself positive because uh, you've been a little bit of a negative Nancy? That's because the sun's not coming out in Chicago. It's been really sad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I think you guys are very similar. Um, So I'm not going to lie. When I saw Nancy on season three, and also when I took a look at her social media, I was like, I don't really get like a good feel of this woman. First of all, she got a great edit on season three, but I was again, like a little bit confused at why she said I do to Bartise at the altar. Um, And so I was like, I feel like I'm not getting a full picture of this, of, of Nancy. Mm -hmm. Um, when I met her at the live reunion last year, so the live reunion for season four, they brought some of the alumni together. I was so impressed by her. Like she is Mm -hmm. probably one of the best people I have met from the love is blind franchise so far. Like she is very considerate, very Mm -hmm. polite, like you said, very uplifting, very positive. And I understand how she kind of got through that relationship with Bartise in that she very much wants to see everything from the other person's perspective. Like, and, mm-hmm. and in that way, I think she's just very like non-judgmental. Um, yeah. And that's one quality I really, really love about Nancy. And so I was dying to have her on this podcast. Cause I was like, I hope people can feel what I felt when I met her because she truly is. And I don't want to like, I don't want to <laughs> seem like I'm exaggerating, but she truly is one of the best people I've ever met. Just yeah. like a very nice, kind person. Yeah, it's it's hard to find that in reality TV sometimes because everyone's like somewhat a little bit can be a little fake, you know, but she's yeah. just pure. She's like very, yeah, and very easy. Extremely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she's a girl's girl. But we are very excited. If you didn't get that feeling from Nancy watching the show and from her social media, because I do think that like that pureness doesn't always translate, you know, through the screen or through social media. Trust Mm -hmm. us. Like she is, we've met a lot of reality TV show personalities, especially from the love is blind franchise. And if there is one person who is so genuinely kind and beautiful in the inside and outside, it really is Nancy. So we're really excited for you guys to hear her story, what she's been up to and, you know, just her experience filming. I think that you guys will really enjoy this interview. We are so excited for our very first guest of 2024 from season three of Love is Blind, Nancy Rodriguez. Welcome to Out of the Pods. Thank you so much. I am so excited to catch up and all the things that we're going to talk about. I literally have been waiting for this all week. (laughs) I'm so excited you're here. We've been waiting all week to talk to you. I feel like you've been our most requested Love is Blind um, guests to come on this podcast so far, just because I feel like people are just really curious. I feel like your storyline was just very dramatic. So people are curious, like kind of what's life like afterward, but also what really happened from your perspective on the show. So yeah. And who is Nancy? (laughs) Yeah. Who is Nancy today? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, so we have a lot of fun questions for you. We also gathered some questions from our listeners through our Instagram page at out of the pods. And so, um, we just compiled them all together. So we think that this is going to be a really fun one, but first question, we always ask anyone from reality TV who comes on our podcast, Mm -hmm. how did you get on love is blind season three? So I was actually on a girl's trip in Cancun back in 2021, and my best friend DM'd me the Instagram post, like the casting post, Mm -hmm. and I looked at it and immediately recognized Love is Wine because of season one, and obviously you guys hadn't come out yet either, and so 
it actually took me, I almost didn't get on because it took me three different times to submit my application. You know, when you're abroad yes, and your Wi-Fi, yeah. especially on resorts is like spotty here and there. So it, oh. and the, and the questionnaire was lengthy. Like it took me at least so 45 long. minutes to an hour just to submit like, Hey, I'm interested. Um, but honestly, I, I want to emphasize that like, I would not have seen myself on a reality TV show period but it was love is blind. So that to me, like the social aspect of it, the experiment side of it was like, I remember telling myself, like, if I'm going to get married or find a person that I'm going to commit my life to, I bet this is my story. If, if it happens, I bet it's going to be something crazy like this. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and then obviously, uh, you know, going through the process, um, just really, Personally, I really enjoyed the application process and the interview process because they ask you so many in-depth questions about you and who you are and what you believe in and why are you ready for what would I remember one of the questions like name th uh, name three things that your friends would say about you, but name three things that your um, partners would say about you from the past. And so it just really made me think like, who am I? And if I don't get on this show, I kind of feel like I went through like a <laughs> like a really yeah. cool unique experience of just going through the interview process. Oh my gosh, yeah. Nancy, that is amazing because I felt the exact same way. Cause I don't think I ever like sat down and like self reflected on what I was looking for in a partner. I'd just be like, Oh, like whoever likes me or whoever I get an attraction to, you know, like I never sat down and was like, what are my deal breakers? Like, what are things yes. that I yes. like, I'm actually looking for. Yeah. You're totally right. You nailed it on that. So, Oh my gosh. You know I what makes that. me laugh though? Is yeah. like, I think about the questions that they asked us and like, yeah. they were talking about how serious the show is. Like, we're really looking for people who are ready for marriage. And then I look at <laughs> the, the men from our cast and I was like, how did you get through? <laughs> really? True. Like, how did you get through? Because there's no way any of you were ready for this. Well, did you guys know from our season, only one guy applied for the show everyone else was recruited. And I don't know the statistics of that, but like if one guy, which was Brennan, Brennan applied, everyone else got recruited or hmm. um, asked on a dating app if they want, you know, so, or asked on Instagram. Mm, yeah. So I think that kind of sets maybe the tone of like, maybe reality TV and finding love on reality TV. Mm. Like, is it more geared towards, you know, the women wanting to explore that option or is it more geared? Yeah, so I'm curious what, overall like all the shows that are about finding love yeah. like you know what that looks like yeah okay true I don't know if you know this Nancy but your season and our season season two um cast it at the same time I think because we mm -hmm. filmed back to back like the moment Deep D and I left the pods your season went right in yeah like, so we yeah. were like okay. 10 days apart in filming yeah yeah, I remember that because some of the producers didn't come along with us to Mexico and they stayed for the next season. But I, I think like we had a, a mixed bag of men and men who like applied versus didn't. But I think you're right that it does set the tone of like, we're sick of dating apps. Let's go on there. Whereas the men were recruited and they're like, okay, let's give it a shot. Let's see how it goes, you know. But um, going back to the pod experience for you, how, what attracted you to Bartiste in the pods? I think for me, it was really in the first seven. So the first day of the pods, it's the seven minute rule where you have seven minutes to date 15 guys. Mm -hmm. And I had one question. I had one question. <laughs> and I think that question could tell me so much about you. And my question was without limitations, without any restrictions, what does your perfect day look like? And it was interesting how some people were like, oh, I'd wake up and walk my dog. And like, and I said, no limitation, meaning you could have superpowers. Right. <laughs> and, you know, and so like the people who, um, who gave me answers that were just like typical, like not using creativity, like, you know, I'd make a sandwich and go to the gym or whatever. Like, you know, I, yeah. I really noted those down as like at the bottom yeah. of my list. Yeah. And I remember Bartice was one of the first ones in the pods that had use the power of teleporting so he was like I would go here and then I would go here and then I like it was something like I'd go to San Antonio and have lunch with my family so family oriented and then I'd, I'd come back to here and then I'd want to end off on like a vacation or something like that. it was something very much so like okay like you have creativity you have the sense of um 
like thinking bigger. And I think that's kind of like the motto that I've had in my thirties is like, I'm not restricted to what I know. And I like, opportunities are endless. And so um, to, for me, it was, I think, initially that seven minute, he was on the top for sure, top two. Um, and then from then on, like, it really was a very warm feeling of walking into the pods, hearing his voice, and then being able to initially start laughing and carrying that conversation. Three hours go by, and you're just like, oh my God, like, I have to go, you know, and, and, who sits in for three hours staring at each other? You know, well, I guess there's a wall there. But <laughs> the like, wall. Who does that, right? There's a wall there. But like that makes it even when, more real, <laughs> right? Exactly. So like, there really were no dull moments compared to other dates. I fell asleep on other dates. I, you know, <laughs> like uh, it was it was hard to get through some dates. And so I think for me, it was enough of that connection. Um, and that energy through a wall that mm -hmm. would allow me to further explore this person that in the phase, right? Because I, I, I saw the experiment as different phases. I don't know if you guys had the same, but like the pause was too. one thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. How was it? It's only you the guys? beginning. Yeah. Totally. The I know. I were only saw... just like the start and like beginning of it all. But then like, as soon as you met, you could tell that you're like entering a new stage of like the relationship. And it's like so weird to call somebody you just met, like a stranger, your fiance, like you're giving them such an important title, but you barely know them. But you, I don't know. It's just like such a weird feeling. Like it's a mixed ball of emotions. Cause you're like, you feel close, but you're not, you know? Yeah. Really quickly, Natalie, I wanted to take a little pause and tell you about something that I did for our girls night next week. Ooh, what did you do? Okay, usually on our girls nights, we consume probably two to three bottles of wine. If it's the weekend, probably a few more because we're together a lot longer. But I just made my life a whole lot easier by using First Leaf to get my wine bottles personalized and delivered to me on my schedule. Well, just to clarify, we have like five friends with us on our girls night. So it's not just <laughs> Deep D and I consuming these two to three bottles of wine. But this is so exciting because I've heard such great things about First Leaf and I've always wanted to try it. Well, it was so easy to set up. You just answer a few questions on what you like, what you don't like, and then an expert team just selects a customized box for you. And this year, I'm really here to expand my palette. And if you are too, try something new this year with First Leaf. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash out of the pods to sign up and you'll get your first six hand curated bottles for just $44.95. That's T R Y F I R S T L E A F dot com slash out of the pods. Try firstleaf.com slash out of the pods. I felt like that in the pods too. Like I felt like there were stages of dating in the pods, mm -hmm. like where you, you know, first meet people and you're kind of like sussing it out. And then you kind of have your like top two or three. And then you just know for sure who you're going to get engaged to. Was it like that for you, Nancy? Because you had another connection, Andrew, and I wasn't sure the way the show edited mm -hmm. it was that Andrew and Bartiz were your two connections, but was there like any, you know, other people? Did you really have two strong connections with those two? Like what was kind of like, who are you really connecting with? I did a lot of internal processing to figure out like, how does this person make me feel? How do I eliminate from yesterday to today? Oh, today is definitely, you know, I'm definitely getting rid of these two. So, um, so I think for me, it was really helpful to process that because at the very end, it really did come down to two people that I would be willing to take the next step with. But then it was almost trying to visualize would I want a good life or would I want an amazing life? And the feeling that I got from Barchise versus Andrew was that difference. Like it felt good with Andrew because it was fun and playful and he's very smart um, you know, he kind of gave me that energy, but then on the other side, I, I just had so much more of a connection with Bartiz, but it took me up until the day before proposal day that, mm -hmm. um, that I, that I knew that, um, because again, I, I could have eliminated Andrew day six if I wanted to, but like, I still felt like, no, no, no I want to see you one, see you <laughs> one more time. Yeah. I had a follow-up question for you, Nancy, about Andrew. Um, and also Bartiz, because I'm not saying that, well, if I'm going to say it how it is, I feel like they both did not get the greatest edits on the show, right? Like 
a lot of people think Bartise is the villain of season three and Andrew had that eye drop scene that was <laughs> I feel like a moment for pop Classic. culture pretty much <laughs> but um it kind of showed I think both like there was some qualities that didn't match up with yours um again just the way the show was edited but I guess did you know like Bartise and separately, Andrew were the people that they were edited to be on the show. Because um, giving some context, like one of the things Andrew has said post-show is he actually had a girlfriend who he's now engaged to um, throughout filming. So like, were you able to like feel that when you were dating them in the pods? And then also Bartise, like, you know, it seemed like physical attraction was so big for him. Like, again, did you like, I guess, feel- Could I sense it? Yeah. Factor? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with Andrew, definitely towards the end, I remember there being an interaction with him and another castmate and she was really upset and she was just kind of like, you know, really going through that process. I think he had either was thinking about breaking up with her or did break up with her. I don't remember exactly what happened between that connection, but it it then made me think twice of like, okay, I'm not talking to the girls about the people I'm dating, which is a good and a bad because then we can't, kind of compare stories of like, you know, how things are happening in in your dates. So I remember that was my, my first red flag was like, keep an eye on that. Like if he did this to her and she's a great person, like, let's just keep an eye on that and see what happens. And so I think for me, what it came down with Andrew is that it was like sus, like he was Mm -hmm. smart, but like, how, like there was something behind it that I just wasn't quite like I wasn't given the answers of clarity from the se- six days, seven days that were in the pods. Um, I wasn't given that full clarity. And I think that really whatever that thing was, which I guess it was the girlfriend, um, it also contributed to why I just wasn't ready to say yes to him. Um, he didn't it almost seemed like he just had it way to put together. And I was like, there's just no way people don't talk about having it put together just to like gloat on themselves. And I felt Mm -hmm. like he was giving that energy. And again, every day that I journaled, I would actually journal in my um, pod journal that they gave us every day, Mm -hmm. but then they would collect it and then we'd have to give it back to them until the next day. So I would go home back to the hotel and I would actually have my own personal journal and then I would rewrite what I wrote so that I could continue again doing that inner work of figuring out like, is this a deal breaker? Is, is Spartis being 25 a deal breaker? And and I think for me at that point, I was like, if I'm going to say no to Bartis because he's 25, I can't say yes to Andrew. Like it wasn't, it was very clear that it was either going to be Bartis or no one at that point. Yeah. That's a, I feel like your intuition was kind of kicking in with Andrew there a little bit. You're like, "Mm, something is a little sus. You know, I feel like kicking with Bartise though. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I think you and I kind of had a little bit, kind of similar experiences in the sense that like, you know, with Shake, I was like very friendly with him. I thought he was one of my best friends actually. And like, I had a positive filming experience with him. Um, but then watching the show back, I think that's where it was like the toughest for me because I was like, Whoa, like the person that I thought you were, you're not that person, you know, there's like a whole different side of you. And, you know, I was just wondering like, how was it for you? Like filming with Bartiz versus like watching the show back? Like, how does that make you feel? Yeah, you know, I think for me and and Deep D, I think that's a a really good thing for you to see that um, the moments when you're living it are very different from when you're watching it. Yes, and totally so understand. for me, it was like for me, it was like living two separate lives because we went through the filming process of it, right? And then um, you're in it, you're in that relationship, but then it's a year and a half later, and then the show comes out, and then the edits are what they are. Now, here's the thing. He said what he said, and I said what I said, and there is no edit to that. Like, those were my mm-hmm. mouth. That was my mouth. That, those are my words. Those are my thoughts. So I think for me, I actually, even looking at the season three um, full edit, the final cast, I, because it was my experience with my fiance, like, I don't date assholes, period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't attract that kind of energy. So to me, he didn't, he wasn't a villain in our relationship out of thousands of hours. I'm, I'm guessing, right. And in, in eight weeks of a relationship, um, 
how much did the the audience get to see maybe less than two hours so yeah. yes he said what he said and yes he he said some hurtful things and i i really do stand by have at that time i chose the best person that i thought was going to work for me and that's the thing is like um we were maybe you all mentioned it earlier before we got on but it was like the feeling of when you're dating and you're just dating just to date and you're like oh do they like me do they like me like i don't know like i in that relationship with Bartice, it wasn't oh does he like me it was do i like him and what oh, I am I that. willing to accept? And I think I, that switch didn't really happen. And I, you got a glimpse of it on the show, but it didn't really happen until I realized that I needed to make this decision for me. And whether he liked me or not is like a him issue. Like you right. figure that out. Like I'm just going to bring what I can to the table and who I am. And then you can figure it out from there because he had the right also to make his own journey on on the show. Um so yeah, I, I think for me overall, his edit was his edit. And I think that he looks more of a villain on there. But as a partner who's dated him, he's not a bad guy. Okay, I've said this to people who have asked me about my goals this year. And every single time I've answered with this, I want to set realistic goals. So I'm not making any huge changes this year. I'm making small changes that'll put me in the right direction. And one of the ways I've done that is by incorporating daily harvest into my meal plan. Okay, so fun fact, when I worked as a management consultant, I would use daily harvest all the time because it's such an easy way to get organic fruits and veggies into my diet without thinking too much of it. I was just so busy. I don't pay attention to what I put in my food or what I eat. So I am a person who really needs this. They're free of starches, sugars, and fillers. It's so easy to prep and they've got so many great options to choose from. Yes, I think it's already helping me stay on track with my healthy habits. My personal favorite right now is the cold brew and almond smoothie. It is so fantastic. And I can't believe that it's healthy. Yeah. So we're saying yes to healthy habits without the hassle with Daily Harvest. Go to dailyharvest.com slash odd the pods to get up to $65 off your first box plus free shipping for a limited time only. That's dailyharvest.com slash out of the pods for up to $65 off your first box plus free shipping dailyharvest.com slash out of the pods. I love that you just said that because I think another layer for me also is that I'm actually glad that I picked Shake because I am the person I am today because of him. There were so many lessons I needed to learn from that experience and that relationship, relationship, if you call it. So I, I think like uh, everything just happens for a reason. And I firmly believe that. So I think like your story and what you just said kind of a little bit mirrors that sentiment, too, I think. But yeah, well, I can't say the same about choosing my partner. <laughs> I was like, I could have done without all of that emotional <laughs> turmoil if I'm being real. Um, but, no. you know, I, I think it's very interesting that you say that because uh, for me, when I watch the show, I think, again, this is a huge part of your storyline is like, you know, Bartise talking about how he found Raven attractive and how, you know, you weren't his physical type. Like, was that a deal breaker for you? Like, how did you, I guess, deal with him saying that about you? Yeah. So. Again, it was different experiencing it in person, like yeah. on the bed when he had said what he said. And then it was for the first time a year and a half later, I watched him say she's a smoke show or smoke house, whatever you know, his comment was. So it was two different feelings, actually. And it was a reliving that second when the show came out, reliving that moment was like, okay. But I think I think the when that happened. I was thankful that he was so honest. Now, the edit shows him to be brutally honest, and I think that's fair. I think he was brutally honest. And I also wanted to create a space where my fiance could tell me something that was hard to say, but not hold it in, right? So it's like, do I want him to hold it in and not say it? Or would I rather him tell me so that we can maybe get like through this? And so I think one thing is, you do want your partner to be attracted to you and vice versa. I think that that's, that was really hard to hear. Um, it was about the second week and when we moved from the Malibu vacation to back to Dallas, it was about the second week when I pulled him aside and I said, um, at that point I had had enough about the, 
you're not my type, you know? And I, I said to him, I said, I'm going to say no to you. This was off camera. We were going to film that evening. And I said, I'm telling you now, like, I'm going to say no to you at the altar because this is not the person that I signed up for. You are not who I want to choose. And, um, and then, and then that moment in our relationship was him asking for another chance. Him, he said, forcing himself to switch his gears and really try to make that physical connection. So I remember that was like a Thursday. So then that very next Friday, we weren't filming and we took the whole day. I think, I think he had worked in the morning, but pretty much the whole day and evening to just hang out, to be in Dallas as dates, as like a couple, we went to the mall, we went here, like we were just, we did normal things that a normal couple would do. And from then on, I literally sat back and I was like, all right, let's see what this relationship is about. And I let him take the lead because again, I was at the point of saying no. And so I think when you see, especially a partner really want to make that change and you, they're not just saying, Hey, I'm going to change or I'm going to, you know, do this, but you see them in those actions. He's, he planned the, he planned all of our Dallas dates. Like I didn't have anything to do with that. Um, he made sure that um, he was kissing me every time I left, every time I arrived home, he was hugging me. So he really did embrace this. You know what? I'm going to give it my all for the rest of our relationship until we get to the altar. And so, and I think maybe that's why too, you guys see that breakdown at the wedding day that he mm -hmm. had um, when he got my gift. Cause he realized that the, as a whole of the whole relationship, like he had been through his own journey of figuring out is this, is she the one that I want to choose and what that meant for him the day of the wedding? You know, that's actually, um, it like segues perfectly into one of our listener questions and they asked, you know, why were you going to say yes at the altar? If you were going to initially say no, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. I think for me, it was being reminded of how I felt in the pod and being felt safe. So I'll tell you a little side story. I don't know if I've ever actually said this, but um, it was about a, a week into um, before the wedding, somewhere around there, it was before the wedding time. And at this point, Bartiz had already asked for a second chance and asked me to stay and asked me to allow him to be my fiance until the wedding day. And then I, I got a call that I needed to go to one of my real estate properties. And so I go to the property, I walk in and there's the smell of smoke in the house. And then I see shoes by like the front door and there were supposed to be no guests in this house. It's a fully furnished um, rental, short-term rental home. So I walk in and I'm like, nobody's supposed to be here. What's going on? And sure enough, there were squatters that had like <gasps> broken into the home. Oh and gosh, so- scary. I was so freaked out, but also at being five, two and Latina, I don't know, maybe the fire was in me. I was like, <laughs> who's in my house? <laughs> so I like, I'm Let's like go. marching through the hallways. I'm watching through <laughs> the living room. I'm like, hello, who's in here? I have, you know, and I'm like trying to be bold and brave. And I'm like, I don't know why I just didn't call down on one. Like in that yeah. moment, but I was like bound to find somebody in there. And sure enough, there were two squatters. It was a couple who had broken into the home. And so I did call in on one. They came, they arrested them. They looked at their bags. They had stolen a bunch of random stuff. And, wow. and uh, so all this happened. And this is like scary. Like I, yeah. at once the police left, I was like, oh my God, like I can breathe now. Yeah. Like I didn't realize how freaky it was until after I came home. And by the way, we were supposed to film right around that time. So I had to call my producer and say, Hey, like I'm, I like, I have an emergency. There's squatters in my home and like police are here. So when I got home, I literally ran to Bartiz and I just held him mm -hmm. and he was like, are you okay? Cause I, so that was the thing is that once I called the police, I called him. And then when I got home, I held him. So it was like those moments that you don't see is like, this is what I say to my partner now. I tell him, I say, when we're going through things or just life happens, I, I remind him like, life is hard, period. How are we going to do life together? What does that mean as my partner? Like, how are you going to show up for me and how will I show up for you? And so I think if you can really have that plan of like, I feel safe or I can come to you, you are my home, um, that those feelings were created in leading up to the wedding. So I think um, 
I think that for me, those were those moments where uh, when you feel scared or, or frightened or you, your life might be taken, who knows? They could have had weapons, you know? Yeah. Um, and so when you know that you can go home and, and someone can hold you and ask you like, um, what do you need me to do? Like, do you, uh, you know, don't go to the, he, I remember he said, don't ever go to a property by yourself again. Like always have someone or tell someone you're going. Um, Cause you know, so those things, I think those were those little sweet yeah. moments that I was like, damn, like, this really could be my husband, yeah, <laughs> like, you yeah. know, it's, it's so crazy. Like hearing these types of moments, because obviously they're omitted from the show or the cameras just aren't there because I think deep D and I had those moments with our partners. Right. And, and so it makes more sense, like why we stayed in those relationships. Like it wasn't the way the show edited, because I think like we are put into these like boxed characters because like, again, it's a TV 10 show. to 12 hour show. Like <laughs> it's just, it is what it is. Um, so I, I think it does make sense. Cause I think when I watched your season, I was like, why is she about to say yes to this guy? Like mm -hmm. what, what, like what did I miss? And I think it's those moments that we miss. Were you shocked when Bartise said no at the altar? Like, were you expecting him to say yes? I think that in my mind, I was 90% sure he was going to say yes. And I think that him sending a note five minutes before we went down the aisle, I've talked about that before, where on the note, he specifically said, let's do the damn thing. What? what? Oh, I yeah. forgot that part. Yeah, well, like, what, that part what, does, what does that yeah, mean? Why would you, you know? say that? Yeah. So, so I think for me, it was like that 10% doubt. Um, yeah. Again, this is a man who for the last three weeks has been putting in all the legwork, all the hard work. We're having sex, we're kissing, we're a couple, where we went and got a couple's massage two days before the wedding, three days before the wedding. Like, oh my gosh. we were, you know, doing the thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, like he is in. He wasn't. And then now he's in. So I think that turnkey kind of moment uh, in our relationship just really kind of guided me to say, yes, like, let's do marriage, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's like, yeah. Did you, did you think that he was going to get such a negative edit? And do you think it was deserved? <laughs> I don't, that's I, a loaded question. <laughs> honestly. And this was just like conversations that cast members were having before, you know, as we knew we were leading up to premiere, everyone thought Cole was going to be the yeah. villain because of what we knew, what we experienced. Um, mm -hmm. So every episode when we were watching the final edits, you know, and we're like, yeah, it's Bartiz. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it was, it was very much Bartiz. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, like Cole, I feel like Cole and Zanab were still like very messy. Like I, also, I actually thought that Cole was going to get the villain edit. I think like, again, I think the tide really churned with the reunion episode, but that's crazy scene. that, uh, it sounds like Bartiz wasn't even on the radar for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Isn't that interesting how that happens? Because I thought I was going to be the villain. Like people were convinced on my season because I said no at the altar and Shane and I were probably the strongest couple until, you know, our wedding day. It, again, I think in the eyes of most of the cast members, like they're like, they're for sure going to get married. Like there is no doubt. Um, and so obviously because I was the one to say no, people were like, she's fucked a hundred percent fucked. <laughs> and, and so, um, it's interesting when the show comes out and you have editors and producers who are seeing, you know, like kind of the full story or how they try to, I wouldn't say create a storyline. Cause I think a lot of the storylines are based on reality, but like really work with the footage that they have. It's very interesting. I think to see. Yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure. Is there anything, this is your chance um, to, do you want to like clear up anything that people don't know from the show that they, you wanted them to see, but it wasn't aired, anything like that? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> no, I think, I think that the relation, like you guys felt the relationship, I mean, like the audience, like you mm -hmm. saw what we went through and you saw yeah. the worst parts that we went through in our relationship. Um I would say the only thing is that at the end of it all, I really do wish they would have shown more of those brighter moments or um, I wish, I wish there would have been more of that, like why I stayed 
versus Mm -hmm. what it was. Um, because I think, I think that was huge for us. Um, so there was actually, there was a scene, um, where a girlfriend of mine and me were doing a dance routine because that's how convinced I was that like, we were going to get married, that I was going to do a wedding rehearsal, like dance (laughs) thing or wedding reception dance for my man. And, um, and, and she helped me choreograph it. And we talked like deeply about what was happening and, and that phase of like the shift in our relationship. But again, it's like limited time. So I get why they edited the way that they, that they did. Um, but yeah, no, I think that would be the only thing is like sprinkle, sprinkle some more of that joy, uh, that we had in, <laughs> in our relationship. Not on love is blind. I was like, you got to up the drama sometimes to make it interesting. <laughs> I was So very interesting. Um, Do you think this is something I'm always curious about because um, we've actually spoken to people uh, uh, from season one about edits for everyone, just like the boxed characters that the show puts us in. Um, Do you think the show portrayed you and the cast accurately? Ooh, I can definitely speak for myself. I think that what you saw is who I am. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think that my character, is there more to me? Yes. But what you get there, like as that edit, um, kind of like the same thing. Like I said what I said and the words that came out of my mouth and the actions that I had and the tears that I shed, like that was me and I own that. So yeah, I would say 100% that was my edit. And that is who I was at that time. I've grown from that. I've learned from that. Watching myself on TV is like therapy because you get a chance to see yourself through other people's eyes almost. Like it's Mm -hmm. really interesting um, um, experience to go through to have lived it and then to go back and rewatch it. Have you, by the way, have you guys ever rewatched your show? Absolutely not. I think I have PTSD a little bit. Okay. (laughs) I feel like I've... Uh, so I haven't, but I feel like I remember the details really well because it involved me, but I feel like it was accurate to an extent, but it definitely, you know, like we always have another facet of ourselves. Like I think it showed me being a lot more serious than I actually am in real life. Um, and you know, I don't know. I, I think it's accurate, but it, it's hard to say because I don't think I got like a bad I, I know I didn't get a bad edit on our season. So like yeah. would I feel the same way if I was like portrayed as the villain? Because I think what you hear from a lot of the villains from across the seasons is like, it was the edit. It was the edit. It was the edit. So I don't know if I just got lucky. And like, could I say the same for the other cast members? Because in my eyes, I feel like it was truly them from our <laughs> season. But I, then there's also people who got like who I thought were like that I don't think highly of that got a good edit. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I think it's interesting, actually, that um, obviously it's not uh, the full version of us. But when you like put people into like certain characters or like want to like adhere to a certain storyline, I think it's important. But like for me, my edit, I was like, wait a minute. I am not like this like shy, like, oh, my gosh, I'm like this good girl. Like I curse a lot. Like I'm just like all over the place. And I was, they like, waited for my, I was like, they waited for my powerful moment till the very end. But I was like, I had lots of little powerful moments in between. They never aired it. And I'm like, I understand it. But at the same time, I'm like, that's not me all the time. I promise, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think know. that's the thing, right? It's like, and, and that's it, right? It's me, but there's so much more, exactly, like, you know, yeah. and, and I think that's what, like, for me, too, when the, right before the show was coming out, I had to really sit down and ask myself, like, what do I want to do with this potential attention that's going to be on my life? And for me, it was like, let me give people my social media to see more of where I come from and who I am and how I'm evolving and like parts of my life. So I really took my social media as a way to continue my story and to say more of like where I come from. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Natalie, did you hear Mint Mobile wireless plans are $15 a month when you purchase a three month plan? Well, I use Mint Mobile, so I did know and hear that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it makes sense how they can do it. Mint Mobile sells their wireless service online, which means they cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those savings directly onto you. 
Okay. So the crazy part is with my old provider, I used to pay $125 post tax. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was on a plan with three other lines, but now I only pay $15 per line with mint mobile and I get 5g almost everywhere I go. Like I've been traveling a lot last month and I've never had a problem with mint mobile. And I'm so done with like overpriced monthly bills for my wireless plan and unexpected overages. Yes. And girl math means that I can spend the money I save on other things and their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. So take advantage of Mint Mobile's limited time offer and get premium wireless service for just 15 bucks a month. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash out of the pods. That's mintmobile.com slash out of the pods. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash out of the pods. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. We have another question from one of our listeners. Nancy, what advice would you give today to your old self when you were filming Love is Blind? Ask more questions, sis. <laughs> ask more questions. Like, don't hold back. For real. Literally True. ask all the questions. You don't necessarily have to run a background check. That's what you have Netflix for, I guess. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think that Question. the moments that we had that were difficult, it was because there's so much happening in the relationship yeah. itself and the filming and families are now involved and there's more and more to it. I just, I wish that we would have taken more one-on-one -on -one moments to just ask questions and maybe it's using the pod questions and elaborating. Um, but like, it's, it's crazy that the way that I date now is so different from then because now I like, I, again, I go back to think about what it is that I want and what it is that I want to, my partner should represent me. So like, what kind of partner do I want to represent me? And that's my selection. That is my choice. And so I think because of the experiment and what it did, it kind of puts you with that one person. And because you're almost like trauma bonding, yeah. um, it's so much easier to just like embrace each other and be there for each other. So I just wish I would have asked more questions. And so I think that like in my, in my relationship now, or even like, as I was dating after the show, the questions that I would ask would help me to decide like how I navigate. Do I keep pursuing this person? Do I not? Um, so literally like, like, uh, 50 cents said 21 questions plus <laughs> or 50 cents. Uh, she just quoted 50 Whoa. cents on a I know. I love that. <laughs> I love it. 20, 20 questions is what I played with like people when I was like dating back in the day, I, you know, like when you run out of things to text, I'm like, let's play 20 questions. Yeah. That's my go-to. Yeah. You're totally right though. Like, I wish I asked more questions, but you know what? Looking back on it, I felt like I didn't ask a lot of questions because like, for example, having political alignment was really important to me, but because there was cameras rolling and everything, I feel like you kind of went through this, like in terms of like political and like moral beliefs type of thing with your storyline, mm -hmm. Nancy, when, you know, on the abortion topic. But for me, it was important, but I felt like I couldn't ask more because it's a sensitive subject. And I was like, we're filming a show. I don't want to like cause us, you know, like cause a scene. And then there's things I want to ask, but I don't want to embarrass my partner and vice versa. So it's like, you know, it's this, I don't know. It was tough. It was such a weird environment, but you're right. Like if I could also give the same advice, it'd be like, ask more questions, ask more questions mm -hmm. and don't be scared of like the cameras, even though, yeah. you know, you should, the cameras are a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Also speaking of you've mentioned your partner quite a bit already. Tell us, Tell us how you found you're in a relationship. Can you like tell us a little bit about it? How did you find him? Because I am terrified of going on dating apps. So <laughs> give me some advice. <laughs> so, um, so here's the thing is for me personally, like I think that Instagram is like a new dating app. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it's just me, but like Instagram can tell you so much about someone, what they post, what they like, uh, who they follow. Um, you know, it just says, it says a lot about someone and not to say that the internet is a hundred percent real all the time. Right. So that's a thing. But, um, so we found each other on Instagram and it was so cute. He actually, so I made a post and it was right around the time. So actually, okay, let me backtrack for six months. I did not date. 
And that was the the pretty much the the time that the show aired a couple months before and up leading up until like January of that year. So for six months, I didn't date at all. I dated myself. I Ooh, did all the go. things for me. I did everything for myself. I was on my schedule. I had no time, no attention for nobody that was of the opposite sex but me. And that cleanse really got me. And I was in therapy too still. So like it really got me in this sense of like, okay, let's do this. Let's get back on the dating in the dating world. But what are you looking out for? What is it that you need to feel as you're meeting these people? Because I didn't want to date the way I was dating before. I didn't want to do mm-hmm. the same thing, like get on the dating app, swipe, 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 swipe. <laughs> like, exactly. you know, it just, yeah, I wanted Sounds it to like be torture. quality. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Like I wanted it to be meaningful. I, I needed it to make sense. So I said to myself, I said, the next person I really date, I can't feel confused. Meaning mm-hmm. if I, if I don't know where you stand or if I am like, oh gosh, like he said something politically like that wasn't aligned with me. Um, then like, those are those red flags that I need to look out for. So I was in this mindset of like, if you're not coming correct and if you're not coming direct, and if I don't <laughs> like from day one, I need to know what, what, where you're at in life and what you're looking for. And so, um, so I think for me, that clarity allowed me to go on one date. I remember it was a chispa date. Uh, <laughs> I, have you guys heard of chispa? It's like a Latino dating mm-hmm. app. No, I've never heard of that. Yeah. So it's not just for Latinos, but it's like majority, like that's what the market that they try to put us together. Um, and so, so I went on a date and it was horrible. Like it was straight up like a bad date. And I remember saying to myself, like, okay, that was clear, Nancy. Uh, You know, these are the things that he does not have. There's no clarity. You're confused. Like abort, like abort that mission. Um, Yeah. So so I made a exactly exit (laughs) to the left. And so for me to have that radar almost of like, how does this first date goes? If you think about it, I've said this to my girlfriends before. I'm like, If you think about some of those ick feelings that you get from someone at the beginning, most likely when the relationship is ending or when it has ended, you look back and you're like, damn, if I would have listened to my intuition and I would have listened or questioned more about this issue that I had from day one, we could have figured things out before we could have eliminated wasting X amount of time. So, yes. so yeah, that, that led to me posting something about dating on my, on my Instagram. He commented on it, but I was just doing my job as like uh, engaging with my audience. So I was just replying back to my people and, and he said something <laughs> really cute. It was so, it was like, it was just really cute, but so simple. Like, uh, let me take you out on a date, which is, it sounds cute and simple. Cause I wanted it. So I was like, uh, that that's kind of creepy. Why would I go on a date with a stranger? But then um, he ended up in my DMs and I noticed his little icon photo and uh, I was like, oh, that's that same guy from like a few days ago that said something about taking me on a date. And so he further inquired and I was like, (laughs) he he was literally following up. He's like, okay, so like pick a city. I see you're in Dallas. I see you're in New York and I see you're in LA. Like, what city do you want me to meet you at? And I was like, wow, oh my gosh, dedication. Coming in clear, (laughs) literally. My current guy doesn't even do that for me. (laughs) (laughs) And so, so yeah, it just let, and then, and then what did I do? I asked a bunch of questions. Oh, let's go. I, I, I was like, let's just see where this goes. So I like went back and forth and it was voice memos and pictures and it's all through DMs. And it's actually, now that I think about it, and and I said this in another interview recently is that, it kind of felt like dating in the pods because his profile didn't actually have a bunch of like selfies or good angle photos. Like I didn't actually know what this man looked like. I didn't know how tall he was. Um, so on our first Ooh, date, I can't do that is- anymore. I can't do see. I can't do that anymore. I was like, <laughs> I need a full, like I need everything. everything. That's why I don't answer like my DMS. If like men message, I was like, if you don't have like, tons of photos about you and this is so bad but like a blue check mark I just like I don't I just don't know a blue check mark that that eliminates so many people (laughs) I know I know but sometimes I'm like like sorry to interrupt you but 
like for you, I'm assuming he's not like a reality TV show personality or anyone in the media. Like for the reason why I think I look for the blue check mark is I feel like I have gone on dates with men in the past who just don't understand the reality TV personality thing. Like we'll date and then I'm like, oh, I'm a content creator or like I have a podcast and they are kind of like, what? Confused like it feels very it. like they're not in the world. Like they're so, so private, which I really want, but I feel like sometimes they don't get it. So did that have an impact on your relationship? And, you know, at any point of just the fact that you were on Love is Blind and you kind of put yourself out there publicly? Um, Not at the beginning per se, because he actually saw me on the show and that's how he led mm, to finding me on Instagram. So I think for me, I kind of, after filming the show and not getting married and after the heartbreak and healing from that, I remember talking to Zenab and I was like, girl, we mm -hmm. hit the jackpot. Like <laughs> we came out single. We didn't have a, a slim picket. Like we don't have slim pickings now. Like we have the we world don't have to good see. Point. <laughs> good point. Good <laughs> point. <laughs> and That's so, actually a good point. Yeah. And so then, um, so I think for us, especially at the beginning, like he knew the world I was coming from. So I think that helped. And literally this man loved this man so much that like, as we started to bond more or like whether we were meeting in LA or meeting in Vegas or meeting in this place, like when we were dating at the beginning stages, he'd be like, oh, so like how much content do you have to film today? Like, let's work out our schedule so that before we go out, like maybe I can take pictures for you. Or um, then he started, oh, it's the cutest. He actually um, creates like albums, like photo albums when we go on trips. And let's say that like, I'm, I don't know, I'm on a trip and I, same trip, but like I have to go to a meeting or something. And then he has the day off. He will go and peruse the city and get places of like, hey, after your meeting, I'm going to take you back to this place because it's a great Cute. place to do content. Aww. So I'm like... So thoughtful. Yeah. yeah. So That's thoughtful. That's really, really thoughtful. Well, you know, I had a, 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 we've debated Natalie and I on this podcast before, like if we got significant others, would we expose them? Like how much do we talk about them? Um, how much do we show them on our Instagram? And I noticed, cause I went back and creeped on you a little bit before <laughs> this interview. And obviously I think I've seen that you haven't posted him much. Like you post him, but you don't show his face. Um, recently though, I did see tiny little glimpses of him. So I feel like you're like kind of introing him into the world of social media, um, from your Instagram, but can you speak to a little bit about why you've like not shown him versus now you're kind of like showing it more. So like, let us, what's your like mindset on that? Yeah. So it's definitely a partnership decision. That's something that from the beginning, being a public eye person, um, at the very beginning, like. I remember him asking me, we were in New York, one of our first weekends here together. And he said, is it okay if I hold your hand and treat you like we're together, mm -hmm. even though we're in public? And I said, I want to be normal. I want Aww. to feel like this is a regular relationship with a regular person. So thank you for asking. And also like, yes, it's, it's like, please treat me as your woman, you yeah. know? And, um, and I think for me, it's like, it's for me to live a, uh, in a, in the public eye and maybe y'all can attest to this too, but like going out or whether it's grocery shopping or going out and having a girl's night, like if, if someone approaches me and, um, and they want to, they want a photo or whatever it is, right. They want to engage. They want to ask questions. Like I'm totally open for it. It's the reason why I'm here, where I'm at today. So I am so grateful and I will take the time to speak to anyone. And then there's the online life, right? Like that's real. And also I need to protect something. So like, I want to live my life as it, as if I like, as if it was a normal life, like not a public eye life. Um, and then online, I think for me, again, as a, as a couple decision, we just wanted to keep something private that was private enough. Cause for me, like, I don't know if you guys grew up in the era of like making scrapbooks, taking pictures, like, you yeah. know, doing all that. Like I love memories and mm -hmm. taking photos. And I really try to use my Instagram as a way to like a form of expression and a form of like what's happening in my life. And so it's like, oh my gosh, like how we're, we're so cute in this picture, this amazing background. And then I'm like, but I want to keep it for us. Like I want to keep yeah. that for, for us and nourish that. And I think when the time is right, we will both decide 
um, how to move forward on like a full public announcement. But for now, I think it's definitely more of a keeping each other, keeping our relationship as safe from the media. <laughs> hmm. Totally. Yeah. I'm a firm believer in not telling people about like really exciting things that are happening until it's like done, solidified and ready to go. I don't know. That's just like how we always are in like my family, essentially, just like keep evil eyes away, you know, that kind of situation. Well, I so. don't have that boundary <laughs> and I probably should. I definitely do. I'm like, mm -mm, nope, nope. It's like, it's kind of like a pregnancy. You don't tell people until a certain time. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that, like you yeah. protect it. But, but I kind of understand like where you're coming from, Nancy, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I, I would... I don't know. Like, I'm just saying this based on like things I've seen and personal experience, I think, but I think the love is blind franchise because we're in an, it, because we are an international show and how big it is. I think it can be like very toxic. I think that, you know, you do see those like mean and hateful comments. And I, I think that there is this line where people just don't view us as like real people and that we might see those comments or they just feel like, Oh, I'm just going to write off like a really shitty comment to them. Like who cares? Um, we've experienced that. But for me, I'm like, uh, you, it's like weird to expose your partner to that. Um, one of they our cast sign up for was actually going through that where someone made fun of this cast member's new partner's looks like his physical appearance. And it's like, you know, Sure, we're kind of used to it or, you know, whatever, but like they're not. And that's yeah. hurtful when they see it. Yeah, you don't oh, want to yeah. subject them. For sure. And I'm definitely here to protect my man. So that was like the next big part of it is like they're they're they are out here trolling, okay? Mm -hmm. Um and so yeah, I definitely that's a big part of it too, is like the you don't want this. I'm not going to let this. <laughs> I mean, there's no control, you know, for people found him. It's funny because people will tag him on my stuff. And, and then like, oh there's been some investigative work and his profile oh, yeah. is, is, is private. Like, I don't know how people find people, but <laughs> there are detectives on the internet for sure. There is such detectives. I remember when the show came out and people would find out things through Venmo transactions. So people do the most yes! to find the least amount of information, but they're good at it. I'm like, wow. I PIs. know. Someone was like, "There, Shane and Natalie definitely got married because she Venmoed him because Shane and I dated after the show. And so I used to get yeah. all these Venmo requests, like pay me $1 if you guys are still together, but like that type of thing. But yeah, yeah. people are, I feel like, once, you know, again, it's like that when the show comes out, I think viewers got invested in like you know what like what's happening in our lives um Everything. speaking about relationships though what is your relationship like with the rest of the season three cast now like um this is actually a question from one of our listeners um they actually said you know i thought the five girls were really close but it doesn't seem like it anymore so has like things changed you know amongst your cast you know, I think what's so interesting is that the the, the Fab Five is what we coined ourselves uh, when we were going through this experience together. Um, during filming, we realized that we were all so different as women, that even though Alexa lived five minutes from me and Colleen was 10 minutes from me and Raven was just right down the road, like we were all in the vicinity of each other, but we never would have crossed paths because we wouldn't have just we wouldn't have crossed paths as individuals. So when the show brought us together, we bonded on that. And I think that there's a lot of respect and a lot of love. And then after the show, meaning now, like years pass, I'm so excited. I'm rooting for, you know, the married couples. I'm rooting for the ones that didn't get married. Um, I'm, I'm closest to Zeneb. And then I see Raven often. So I'm close to her as well. Um, You're both in New York, right? Right now? Yeah. So New York, uh, uh, Raven and I are both in the New York area. So that's, you know, um, that's good. But I think for me, it's the, it's the, we all have separate lives outside of yes. this. So it's, it's, it's great that we bonded. And I know that my girls have my back. If I called them, if I called Alexa tomorrow and I said, Hey, like this is happening. Like I know I could lean on her. Um, so for me, it's the, more of the quality moments that we have had shared together. Um, and I will cherish those. And yeah, like at the end of the day, like we all have separate lives, whether we're trying to build our relationships or stay married or, you know, um, move ar across the country. Like I know that the girls are rooting for me and vice versa. 
Yeah. I think that's kind of similar to how we are too. It's like, we all are so busy in, in our own lives, but at the same time, we will drop anything to be there for each other. If, you know, push come to shove or like they really needed us. So I think we're all in the same boat. Okay. This is a fun question, but do you think that you would ever do reality TV ever again? Um, I would do reality TV if it made sense for where I was in my life. So let's say it was like a real estate show, right? Like um, that would be something that's aligned with my goals. If it was something that made sense, yes. Um, but I think that's the thing is that ne- uh, specifically Love is Blind is an, is an unscripted show. So it mm-hmm. would have to be a show that was aligned with that, not, you know, something that's pre-scripted or you get fed, you know, questions and things like that. So it would just have to align with where I'm at. Um, but I, I enjoyed the filming part of it surprisingly, cause I never would have thought I would have done reality TV before that. Yeah, dude, same. <laughs> I was like, what <laughs> am I doing? <laughs> uh. I think one thing that viewers really saw in you, um, when watching the show is how confident you are paired mm-hmm. with this like aura of positivity. Like, I feel like you're a very positive person. Um, so like, what's a piece of advice you'd give our listeners, um, who are trying to achieve that just being confident and positive? Yeah, I think, um, for me, it really is rooted from my upbringing and my mom just always instilling in me that anything is possible. However, now as an adult, like it is my responsibility to be in control of my happiness and I am my biggest cheerleader. So, honing in on that and doing things that make me happy because I want them. So um, moving to New York because it's my decision and because I want to, and I will find a way to get there. Right. So planning for that, I want to pay my debt off because I don't want this burden on my shoulders and I want cash flow and I want legacy. So I think that I want, I can, I will do um, really does instill that confidence to try anything at least once. And so although taking risks of, let's say, going on a date after a while or, or um, you're wanting to take a risk and it, whatever that risk might be, just do it. Consider all of your options, really prepare and plan um, and do that thing that you're trying to or that you're curious about, because if anything, it's either going to be successful or kind of successful or not. Like you won't know unless you try it. So I think for me, um, being able to take risks allows me to build my confidence. Um, and like I said, that that could be as simple as being the first one in my family to go to college or to get a master's degree, you know, or to move across the country. Like for me, it's always been curiosity and leaning into that to take those risks and seeing what the outcome might be. And then being kind to myself when those things don't happen the way that like I wanted them to happen being kind. And, um, I think again, like that just goes back to like my confidence, but if you love yourself so much, I said this before I I met my person, I said, um, I was obsessed with myself before I met you. So it made it easier for me to understand if you were obsessed with me too, because like, I need (laughs) you to be obsessed with me, but I can't see what like healthy obsession looks like if I don't love myself. And if I don't, see why like these are emotional things that I love about myself mental things that I love about myself physical things that I love about myself um so again I think that just to bring it back like all around like even in the relationship that I was in on love is blind like when that person wasn't physically attracted to me I was like all right cool but like I like me and I like what I look like so that's a you problem if you can't get past that I'm too short or I'm I don't have blonde hair or I don't have blue eyes and I don't have a six pack. Like, let that be your issue, not mine. Yes. I literally, I was in the exact same boat. So thank you for that. And also it's so funny because I'm like an overthinker and I literally wrote down in my notes app today. um, I was like, stop thinking, stop, do like, stop thinking, stop planning, just do it because I'm such a live in my head type of person. So I love that like advice. But one last question for you. What is next for you? Do you have any future plans? What are your goals look like? Like what can we see from Nancy? Yeah. So I think 2023 was an amazing year to just experience, whether that was experiencing New York as my playground, starting a new relationship. We just had uh my partner and I had our our 
meeting for like the end of year and starting for like the new year couples uh, meeting for our goals. And number one is it's, it's, oh, it's a, have a weekly couples meeting period. Like yeah, you, the, it's, 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 it's a moment to just really bond about whatever is happening in life or the things that we want to go and that we can support each other. So, um, so we had our meeting um, last week and I think overall, like this 2024, like I really want to press forward on the education side of real estate. Like there's so much that I've put together already on paper when it comes to like doing what I have done. And so for 2024, like I want to share that knowledge in a way that's digestible in a way that I want other people to thrive and other people to explore, whether it's financial freedom or um, investing or real estate or a combination or sources of income. Um, I think for me, it's like 2023 was great to experience it for the first time in, in like a whole year, but now it's like, what do I want to really hone in on? And I think for me, it's continuing to be a social media creator, a content creator, um, and then also like giving back to what I know, which is the real estate world and the investing world. Yeah. Okay. Love that. I absolutely love the couples thing though. I think that was, that's really cool just to like sit down and like come I know I've, I together. was like I I feel like I should be incorporating that into my <laughs> yeah no it's current. literally just like it's he cool had thing. a whole yeah he had a whole google doc set up he had talking points he had how many minutes it would like take us to do everything oh my gosh. he had like okay, a pie wow. chart of like you know what kind of wow. happiness like what a pie chart mean? a pie chart with Honestly, like I think, coordinating us this year. I think Natalie and I need that we spend way too much yeah. I think that Natalie's technically seriously my girlfriend right now so yeah so <laughs> we, we should probably have, be having weekly couple meetings <laughs> But thank you so much, Nancy, for coming on Out of the Pods. I feel like, yeah. you know, some of the things that you said, I was kind of surprised to hear just because I think it clears up a lot after, you know, all these years since um, your season came out um, of kind of what's happened. So we are so glad that you're doing well and we hope you come again soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, ladies. And again, I just want to emphasize that, like giving y'all the fact that y'all have given us a voice outside of what reality TV was like, like, thank you for having this platform. And I'm super excited of what you guys are going to bring for this next year and the future and all the blessings and success for you guys. You deserve it. Thank you. You You too. We love you. I hope you guys enjoyed Nancy as much as we did. If you guys have any questions or comments, please go to our Instagram page at out of the pods. And make sure you leave a review and subscribe. We love reading your reviews. See you next Wednesday. Bye.